Ogre's throw taken by Shields. Increasingly a feeling that if Wasps could score another try. We're starting to um, border on the miraculous for Bristol. But Bristol off! He got to him, it broke off, he tackled him. Well, Nathan Hughes does. Oh, Robson takes it quickly and scores! Oh, and it's allowed, it's allowed by Matthew Carley! And that might be the Twickenham try. One of the players of the season, Dan Robson. The most alert of all. And Wasps score what may be the most significant try of their season so far. Well, what a reaction from Dan Robson. Matthew Carley still explaining his decision. And that's what will create the fury with Bristol players. How can you let that try stand if you're still explaining the decision? But I guess in the laws of the game, it's the quick thinking Dan Robson. And surely that's the one that gets Wasps to Twickenham. I think they might just need to look at the actual placement of the ball again. Does he ground it? Yeah, he does. Yeah, Matthew, the I don't know what to it. think about that. I don't know whether it should be allowed or shouldn't be allowed. It's, it's great quick thinking from Dan Robson. It's very opportunistic. But isn't the ref talking? Isn't he? Was he talking, instructing? Or just explaining? Well, while he was talking and explaining, and Bristol were probably listening, Wasps kept on playing. Yeah, I guess you could argue that it doesn't matter whether he's explaining it, look, he's got the ball in his hands, he's taken it from the mark. But often when a, when a play happens that's behind the referee, you often see that pull back, but on this occasion, Matthew Carney lets it go. And Wasps are now thinking a final at Twickenham. Nearly a smile, very nearly a smile. But Thomas Young, well, that'll be some concern. He's going to have a couple of weeks to sort himself out. Should he need to? Should Wasps now finish this job and push all the way to Twickenham? My goodness, he's been brilliant again today. And Kieran Brooks as well. Talk about confidence, Lee Blackett's mentioned it so many times. You've got to say, Wasp really looked and felt confident right from this first whistle today. They felt like they belong in a semi-final. This is their fourth in the last five years, of course, and you can really see that experience, the launch breeze, the Fekitoas, the Gopaths of this world. Really passing that experience on. Tom Willis on for... Thomas Young. And Bristol have um, made a change. Alapati Leua for Luke Morahan, another former Wasp Leua. And Bristol wrestling the ball off the table, and they'll get a go inside Wasps 22 into the final quarter. Step up there, Wasps careless the from Wasps there. Tom Willis taking the ball in, just about stayed into touch, and then Kibarigi forced out Bristol have to strike now, they have to come up with a play. Out you come, six. Six. Uh, Harry Thacker has still it again. Advantage. And they're still going, they're still motoring towards that. Wasps try line, a penalty as well. There's the ball. Now Piers O'Connor drifts away to the right hand side. Will side have the advantage against Jack Willis. Yeah, yeah, Into the side, but uh, he's given away a couple of penalties today, Jack Willis, but he's done them at the right time. And not too cynical. Probably felt he had to stop that one. That's another part of being a player knowing when you've got to give penalties away and when not to. Now, this is an area that Wasps haven't played particularly well in today, defending the driving wall. Bristol, that the man there in your picture, Harry right. Thacker scored the last try for Bristol from the driving wall. 
the wasps are um, bringing on a small semi-detached house and B. E. Allo. not many blokes would be bigger than Kieran Brooks but he's one well it's been overthrown and it might yet work out Bristol's way this is Sheedy Randall and Thacker oh that's nicely done and Sinclair then with a try he scored for England against Australia in the World Cup quarter-final Randrandra Thacker again Bristol gathering still hoping it's on the body still not the ball. believing Sheedy lays it back for Lang Oh, no, and Piatow lost it, and now Kibirigi will charge away, sprint for the line, look at Randrandra doing what he can do, but Twickenham's beckoning, and Zach Kibirigi makes sure. It's all Wasps now, and they will end their season in south-west London at Twickenham. They're heading to the Gallagher Premiership final. Well, it's their defensive effort today that's really stood out, head and shoulders, and it's been every single man. They've really had Bristol's card marked at every opportunity. They've won the important collisions on the game line. They've forced the mistakes. Bristol having to throw caution to the win. But look at this press from Wasps. And Umanga, Kibarigi, it's just a blind pass from Piatau. Doesn't quite measure it correctly. And Kibarigi, once he picks the ball up, he's got the pace to see off Rendranja. And Wasps are home and hosed. Oh, finally emotion, finally emotion. A little over 15 minutes to go. Well, they've taken their opportunities. They've been just a little bit more physical in all the departments that matter. They've been that much better in pretty much every department. to take Jimmy Gopeth to 20 points and to take Wasps to 40 and on the brink of the final. Yeah, the play, they both end up running the same line parallel to each other, which means they can't eventually get around the corner. It makes the pass very difficult for Piatau and for Malins to take. And then we know what happens. Kibber Riggi, one of the best finishes in the Gallagher Premiership. He's away. The Wasps are into the sunshine and into the final. Bristol got their own next week to look forward to. Inside. Use it! And Bristol have been forced into um, an emergency change, having used Dan Thomas, Nathan Hughes was injured, so the hooker, George Kloska, is now on, so Kloska, you assume, will be the hooker, and Harry Thacker will go into the back row. But at a time when Bristol don't want to be having to patch and make mend, and do they are, and now Bassett and Wasps are running right here. And this will be another try for them, and it's scored by the Italian fullback Matteo Minotti. Absolutely magnificent try, Nick. Absolutely brilliant. Bassett on the outside, doesn't even think the kick's coming. Gopeth has seen it before him, he's almost trying to send, send him a telepathic message across the field. He gets on his bike, just bounces up for him, takes it in his left hand, offloads back to the inside, Minotzi goes over in the corner. We've got two great sides playing this afternoon, both with similar styles, both want to play rugby. One of the Wasps is going to the final next week against whoever wins the power battle next. That really is going to be a fascinating dichotomy of styles. That sunshine's been a real problem for Bristol. Again, it came from the kick okay. from Bellicott, puts it in over the top, and Bristol lost it in the sun. Wasps were able to pounce, and after that, well, it's all the skills. I agree with Matthew Carley. I've got no idea how that ball stayed on the field. And Italy are going to have to work out who they'll play at fullback against Ireland in Dublin because Matteo Minotti is going to be elsewhere in a couple of Saturdays' time. And he's having one of those days. Jimmy the boot. 
Jimmy the Boot. 22 points, and it's Wasps 47, Bristol 12. Well, look at this for a kick. Austin talks about golfers getting a bit of chew. Well, there's something there. It just did enough, didn't it? Just slowed down enough. It was a lovely pass, actually, from Bassett as well. Quick hands, Minotzi, he's got the pace. Tackle, let it go! Umanga. Oh, now that was a close to a leading elbow. We've seen a lot of those recently. Stay in front, James! Max Malin shielding his eyes and taking the ball skillfully. Sinclair. This is Sam Bedlow. Back out. Oh, he's given it away. Yeah. Let it go, let it go! In one of those days where there have been too many loose Bristolian threads. And all the promise of this Premiership season is ending in Coventry today. All the achievement of this Premiership season, let's not lose sight of where they've been and where they are right now. They're in a, a playoff semi-final, but it's going to be the semi-finals and no further for Bristol this season. Yeah, some battered players around the field now starting to feel the pace of this game. Wasps running right, playing with confidence, as they have done all season. That's their fifth bonus point in a row. Not that it matters in a knockout game, but they just cannot stop, stop scoring tries. I don't think you get one lol in the semis. <laughs> I know what you mean. Both sides, when they get going and they get free, they're, they're hard to stop. And you think to the final, Bath or Exeter, I don't think Wasps will really care which of the two they play. It's going to be about that breakdown, about that back row. And I do think both DORs, head coaches, anyone on the coaching staff from both sides will quite happily just shake hands now and walk off. Well done, Wasps, you beat us in the semi. We've both got big games to come. We don't want any injuries. Let's call it a day, lads. Let's call it a day. Nick's got to get home for his tea. You're driving me home. Uh, Chris Vui. Uh, Semi Randrandra. Lots of folk on Twitter wondering why we call him Semi Randrandra. We call him Semi Randrandra because it's his name. Um, and if you asked him how he pronounced his name, that's what he'd tell you as well. It's a Fijian thing. It's a bit like Manu Tuolangi, but again, uh, one or two folk getting hot under the collar. But uh, if you want to tell him that that's not how he should pronounce it, then good luck to you. He's not one to be argued with, I don't think. Although Wasp managed to have shackled him pretty well today, particularly given that Fekitoa left early. They've had the answers for Randranja and Bristol. And he will know, Bristol will know, that um, they've been distinctly second best today. Tom Willis at number eight now. More familiar position for him, he's certainly one. We know everything about his brother, but keep an eye out for Tom Willis as the games and the seasons move on. Well, penalty rather wasted, and uh, Malins can happily fire it away to um, Gotteth. This is B. Allo. More! All available. It's um, a manga. And then Lua Tua finding right, O'Connor. Thacker. Quickly to Bedlow. That's gone loose. Crystal will happily put this in the draw marked, never to be spoken of again, and what just look Play ahead on. to on that advantage. huge European Challenge Cup final next weekend against Toulon down in X. They've still got so much more to play for this season, so much more to reflect on that's good. No advantage. And they will be uh, back in the Elite next season as well in the Champions Cup. That's what the hard work's been about as much as anything 
this season, but um, it's been a tough one today, and it's been tough partly because of the contribution of that man, Jack Willis. Yeah, and I think what Bristol will take away from this is, you know, Pat Lamb's building a culture, a philosophy, a, a style of rugby, but when you come up against top sides, and Wass are a top side at the moment, and when your defence is dominating the attack, you can't just run the ball from everywhere. You have to play with a little bit more kind of control and game management, and Austin talks about it. Wouldn't it be good if Bristol played in a slightly different way? They haven't. They've played exactly how they've played all season, Clouds. and Wasps have just had their card marked today. Fine. There's a really big story Set. of the day, Nick. Game line success. That's the worst of any side all season in any game for Bristol, and the best for Wasps. There's, no, there's the story. Yeah. And finding Bedlow. Once again, ball lost. Velikot. Amanga. Got a slipping and sliding. I don't, know if, I don't know if Wasps have got any substitutes left, Nick, but I would take Gopeth off now. He's the one player, if they want to win this tournament, they cannot do without. Well, they don't have any left, but there's nothing to stop them playing with 14. Oh, I'd, ta I'd take him off. Well, that's what Warren Gatlin used to do, that. He used to Use it. take a, a man off, play with 14, finish the game with 13 at one point. Randall. Tia Tau. Now Bedlow always slid his way through an Earl, and there's going to be a moment here, is there, for Piers O'Connor. Back to Randall, and Bristol will score. Oh, that's what they've been doing all season, and that is lovely to see. We've not seen enough of the real Bristol in this semi final, but that was a gentle reminder of what this club are all about. Yeah, real class, Harry Randall goes over again, it's that man Malins with his offloading ability to get on the outside and to free the hands up. And Randall gets over, Sheedy not messing around with the kick. And he's got it, 47-19. Yeah, it's all about the ability of Malins to get his hands three through the back of the tackle, two more offloads. It's the first time, really, that Bristol have been able to create any numbers on any side of the field. The tries coming from their driving play. But this is what they'll be hoping to recreate next week. The Challenge Cup final. They'll be hoping that they can open the field up, create the sort of space. It's the first time we've mentioned Earl all game. We've been talking about him all season. I think that's you know, it's a real testament to the Waspack row that they've done a job on him as well not being able to get in those wide channels and get his running game going. There is a Thaka. Tia Tau and Sheedy and Bedlow again, who's been busy since he came on, tried to link up with Thomas. However, Wasp scrum. Well, it's Malins again, isn't it? He's the danger man. He's the one that's able to just get past the tacklers just throw the offload, he created that try for Sheedy through his offloading and nearly created another one there. Man of the match, Oz. Well, it's been some really good performances from Wasp, hasn't there? I think Dan Robson's pushed his number nine, England would get credentials ever more. Lovely game from him. Gopeth has kept the scoreboard ticking over, which plays a huge part in Wasp's ability to play the game. But we have to give it to Jack Willis. He's our Gallagher Premiership man of the match. There's going to be many things written about this young man in years to come. We could just be seeing the, the start of a uh, truly global superstar. This guy is incredible. There you go. the third man of the match award in five matches, so it's not one-offs that we're seeing here. This is something that's there consistently well. I think him and, I've got to say, Rollins as well have been picking the pack today. Yeah, Rollins has been great. You just see every time he touches the ball, something positive happens, even if it's under pressure. And we haven't even mentioned Pele, who's come onto the field. Time. Time off.
five minutes to go. Oh. Five minutes for Bristol to head off and start to fully Bye. focus on next Friday's Challenge Cup final against Toulon. A match you'll be able to see here with us on BT Sport. Five minutes for Wasps to start the process of looking ahead to the final. Once again, it's Randall. Dancing. Bassett was having a hunt around there. Patty Leo at once of this parish. Now an adopted Bristolian, Sheedy to Piatau, and again, Bedlow running hard and tried to find O'Connor. It wasn't coming through, back for the advantage. Yeah, look, all the decisions going with Bristol now that were going against them earlier on. They get that momentum, but it's too late for them. Created numbers down this wide channel. Sheedy goes for the goal line. Cleverly, however. Here goes Kloska. Sorry, Stephen Luatua. Thacker. And Thomas up on his shoulder. Piatau. Kloska again. This is Sam Bedlow looking for Malins. Knock on black, knock but, on um, on Josh Bassett, who's worked as hard defensively as he has offensively today. It's again slowing things down, but it's still Bristol, it's eager down. to have the final word. Oh, that's beautifully done, absolutely beautifully done. And then the chip over the top, and this would be something chop, else. Chop, chop. That's magnificent. Max Malins and Bristol. It's the season that they have re-announced themselves as Premiership forces. It's the first semi-final in a long time, but it won't be the last. Yeah, if you're Pat Lamb, if you're a Bristol fan, take that positive. Yeah, well done, take that beautiful piece of skill into next week. Look at this offload, hands through, out the back door. Still needs finishing. How good has Malin's been? You give him half a gap, he will finish for you or create. That's where their strength is. Their strength is taking opportunities. This is seventh try in eight games. I think they've got to go all the way next week. Wish them all the best. Yeah, he's been one of the stars of the Premiership. Real good move for him on loan from Saracens. He's been outstanding, particularly since rugby's restarted. And another demonstration there. He's been their danger man. Everyone talks about Randrandra quite understandably and what he can do. But actually, it's Max Malins who has come up with all the gems today for Bristol.